So a neat trick I picked up recently that I could use instead of my typical template to create a Rails app is using a, a .RailsRC file. And this essentially is like a default way to declare what you want to include and not include when creating a new Rails app by default based on your machine. So the actual file itself will be a .rails.rc file and that can live in your home directory. So like basically at the root level of your computer, you can add it there. Right now I'm, I'm basically at that point. You see my path there is just the user's um, a leverance, which is my name. If I were to create a file, I'll call it touch. And then we'll say .rails rc. And then we can list in that file. We've we've got actually I created that in the wrong directory. So let's go back to um let's see. Let's do it here. We'll do this way. So touch squiggly line <laughs> rails.rc. That'll make it at that path, and we can open that file. Um, so let's go to that dot rails rc. Actually, I'm going to do code. See if that opens. Yeah. So now we have this file at the basically uh, root level of our account on our system. I'm on a Mac, if you couldn't tell by now. So what you can do in this file is to kind of just declare the options you normally pass a new Rails app when you create it. So for instance, if you want to just declare a database type by default, you could say PostgreSQL. Uh, maybe we could skip, we'll just do Webpack, for maybe View. Um, and then we could declare my template if we wanted to. So we could say template equals um, we can pass the, the root to that. So I think it would be, so if I do PWD here, I can copy this path, go back to my editor, paste that in, because it's going to be locally on my app, but we need to pass the actual template to that and kind of go to town. So there's a ton you could skip here, like including test frameworks. You could skip action mailbox or action text, all those things you can actually add to the app if you wanted. Um, it's all dependent on what you want. Um, so this would be what I would use if I didn't already have a template in mind, but you could also use it in unison. So these two things can be combined and really make a, uh, creating new apps like super powerful. Do a few more options. Maybe we can do, um, i trying to think what I could do. Skip mailbox. I don't really think we'll use that. Oh, maybe at the beginning. Skip action mailbox I think it's called and go from there now depending on what you use for testing maybe you use um, rspec or something you can actually skip the, the default uh, framework with a slash t here so like dash t would actually skip test i'm going to leave it because i tend to use many tests personally so let's see if, how this works if it does for for starters so let's make a maybe a new app on my desktop or something so we'll do ls and go back to squiggly cd desktop okay and now we can do like a rails new and then just pass in whatever i think which could be let's just say a demo um rails app i don't know that's a terrible name but let's see like it's installing device so it is referencing my template so that's a good thing that means we seem to be doing something right here yep there's view going in so this, this is working great so my fan is definitely spinning at this point we installed a lot of dependencies our new rails app is created if we cd into the app and sorry for the noise if you hear my fan uh, let's go with that. I'll open it up and we should see basically the things we pass through. So we won't have action mailbox or anything under this, the hood here. Um, but we will have Postgres by default, which is a good starter. Webpacker, of course, comes with Rails. But then the, the key thing is, if you remember, I added view. 
to our app. So now we've got the boilerplate for that already added to the app along, along with the mounted instance of view here as a demo. Um, we already used my template prior, so now all my stuff that's come from before, my, my Tailwind-based stuff uh, for my kickoff Tailwind template, if you're not sure what that is, check out my other videos. You might see how I use that. Um, but those things combined give us, you know, kind of this framework within a framework to really go to town on creating a new Rails app from almost scratch. So the best part of all of this is that I don't need to remember those flags to pass. I enter them once in that .rc file or Rails RC file, and I'm ready to go from there. So I just wanted to share that quick tidbit. It's a nice little tip, I guess, that I've used in the past. But I mostly reference my template template most of the time, but sometimes you want to pass those flags depending on what you're using. Maybe you're only looking for an API-based Rails app or something like that. You might be able to kind of point your um, app to that and just go to town. So hope that was useful. If you have any requests for future videos or something revolving around Rails, let me know, and I'll be happy to do those. All right, peace.